I'm a fraud. A big, fat, handsome fraud. And it's only a matter of time before the world catches on. Now what? Greetings, Captain Disillusion. Ellie, what are you doing here? New month, new delivery. Got a fresh batch of debunking topics for you? Right here. Already? Mm-hmm. Come on in. People want you to discuss the moon landing hoax conspiracy theories. Mythbusters already did that better than I ever could. To give your two cents on the topic of cryptozoology. Do I look like either of the hosts of Monster Talk? And to definitively disprove the flat earth hypothesis. Vsauce covered it. I can't compete with that sexy beard. I'm just an expert on spotting if a picture of a thing is on top of a picture of another thing. Ellie, have I become superannuated? Yes. No, I gotta level with you. I don't really know what superannuated means, but I do have one more item you might be interested in. What is it? No one knows. We're hoping you might be able to figure it out. Has anyone tried the button? Fact! The high-definition video image is made up of 2,073,600 pixels, making me look a little different. Oh. My. Holly. It's you. It's him. Well, at least I still got my hair. <laughs> Ellie, this man instilled a love for science in millions of kids. Wow. Do you sign stuff? I'm Captain Disillusion, sir. It's an honor to meet you. Oh, well, you know, it's always great to meet some fans, old or young. Matt or Glossy? <laughs> what century is this, anyway? The 21st. Oh. <laughs> hey, you know, you remind me of one of my lab assistants. Yeah, Josie, yeah. No, no, Phoebe. No, you're really more of Eliza, yeah. I'm Ellie. Oh, nice to meet you, Ellie. Nice to meet you, Captain Disillusion. I'm Beekman, and you've just broken into Beekman's world. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Th th this is my show. I'm a web video debunker. Well, I I'm a TV scientist. Well, I've got all these kids asking me for scientific explanations of weird videos, and I don't know nothing about no science. Well, <laughs> I've never used science to explain a weird video before. Hold on. I'm getting an idea. You and I should team we got up. it. Clear your browser cache and save your work. It's the mashup of the millennium. Here they are. The valiant vanquisher of VFX and the irrepressible instigator of scientific inquiry. The two, the only, Captain Disillusion and Beakman. You post them, we'll roast them. Let's, Let's debunculate. due to a copyright claim by Sony Pictures Television. Jeff Vance from Salem, Oregon asks, Dear Captain, you might want to check out some of the free energy devices sometime, like this one. Not really a question, Jeff. I've seen these. Someone builds a contraption and claims that magnets can make it spin forever and generate unlimited energy. A magnetic engine? Also known as a perpetual motion machine. I got this, Beekman. Jeff, if these videos are fake, there's about a million ways to create the illusion using mechanical effects. First, if these videos are fake? Oh, Captain, my Captain. We don't need to know how a perpetual motion machine was faked to be certain that it was. How can that possibly be? Because such a device is against the law. I knew it. It's a conspiracy by big oil to keep free energy technology out of the hands of the public. Wake up, sheeple! No, 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 Ellie. I'm talking about the laws of thermodynamics. If you spin a wheel by itself in the vacuum of outer space, it'll keep on spinning at the same speed forever because there's nothing out there to stop it. Zaloom! Perpetual motion. 
But if you try to use the wheel to power something else, it won't work. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that energy, which makes our wheel move, can't be created or destroyed, only converted into other forms. If the wheel is attached to a bicycle, the friction on the axle converts the wheel's kinetic energy into heat. So eventually, when all that energy has escaped, the wheel will stop. The second law of thermodynamics tells us that this process is a one-way street. It can't be reversed. Here on Earth, there's also air resistance and gravity acting on the wheel, so it'll stop spinning even sooner no matter how well oiled it is. You can't win. A machine won't put out more energy than you put in. Worse, you can't even break even. A machine won't run forever unless you keep putting energy into it. Okay, fine. But the people in the videos are putting energy into their magnet engines. They're using magnets. I hate to burst your <laughs> bubble there, demon, but magnets are not a source of energy. Then what do you call this? <gasps> I call that a waste of potential. Now are you telling me that you kids in the 21st century still don't know how magnets work? Well, it was a trending topic once because of a song and I think I bought the song but didn't click on any of the articles. Oh brother. All the stuff in the universe is made of atoms, each of which has a nucleus with some electrons zipping around it. These electrons have what physicists call spin. When a whole bunch of them in neighboring atoms spin in the same direction, they create a magnetic field. We can get this to happen in some metals, turning them into permanent magnets, like the ones on your fridge. I don't know. Seems to me like there's plenty of energy inside magnets. Well, Captain, as we both know, things are not always as they seem. Observe. Oh, thank you, Ray. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, thank you very much. Opposite poles of two magnets attract. The closer they get to each other, the more the two magnetic fields interact and potential energy increases. But once they snap together, all the energy dissipates as heat. You have to put in just as much work to pull them apart again. What about when the same poles of two magnets repel? It must take energy to push like that. Yeah, but who's doing the pushing? The magnets or you? Uh... Uh, that's nice, Beak. But uh, here's a fast fact for you. Regular, non-perpetual motion motors have magnets in them. Ah, oh, they do, but not just any magnets, special magnets that can be turned on or off with electricity called... Electromagnets. Which we already covered in uh, Season 4, Episode 13. Of Beacon's World. So, motors? <gasps> Ooh, I know this. Every electric motor has two basic parts. The rotor, the thing that rotates, and the stator, the thing that stays still. Both are lined with a combination of permanents and electromagnets. When some of the electromagnets in the stator are turned on, they attract magnets in the rotor, making it turn a little. Then those electromagnets go off and another set goes on, turning the rotor further. Over and over, the magnets in the rotor chase the magnetic fields in the stator and the motor shaft spins. Oh, amazing, Ellie. How do you know so much about electric motors? I'm saving up for a Tesla. Oh. I Tesla is a car now. <laughs> Fascinating. Wait a minute. I think I just got it. It's not the magnets that drive the motor, it's the changing current. As long as you have electromagnets turning on and off on the stator or the rotor, or on both, things will move. That's right. But if, but you, have if you have permanent magnets on both sides, the whole contraption will get stuck faster than the clock I filled with mayonnaise that time. Yes, because Because of, some of something called Cogging torque. Boy, you're really getting the hang of this. When two magnets are close together, it's not just their closest poles that are interacting, it's their magnetic fields as a whole. So in a setup like this, the magnets are doing just as much pulling as pushing. 
Try it for yourself and you'll see that instead of spinning fast, the rotor gets stuck whenever the stator magnet is exactly halfway between each pair of rotor magnets. They lock together like the teeth of two invisible cogs. Which means you'd have to get creative to make your machine appear to work. For instance, you could put a reed switch in the housing of the fan to have it activate from proximity to the magnet and power the motor with a button cell, or you could connect two button cells directly to the coil in the glue beads on this contraption, or you could hide a small, powerful motor and battery in the core of this needlessly large device, then pretend to disassemble it and let gullible observers examine the decorative parts while your lackey makes sure that no one gets too close to the actual machine. The possibilities for fooling an uninformed audience are endless. So does this mean magnet engines could never, ever, ever, ever work? Well, it means that they don't work according to the laws of physics as we understand them today. In the future, we might make new discoveries that change our core assumptions about how the universe works forcing us to rewrite physics textbooks and helping us overcome these limitations in a completely new way. But I wouldn't hold my breath. So, Jeff of Salem, Oregon, that's the deal with free energy devices. Well, looks like my work is done here. Where you off to, Beekman? You know, there's always so much more to learn. Time to explore the world. I hear Mexico is really nice this time of year. Remember, love with your heart. Use your head for everything else. See you next time. On Captain Disillusion. Captain